Okay, so uh, I wasn't really going to do this one right away, but I, as I was watering today, I noticed that quite a few of my little seedling uh, Sabrellias, um, one of the hybrids, were starting to push themselves out of the pot. So some of those I'm going to repot, put them in some uh, fresh sphagnum moss uh, with some fresh pots, and I will show you how to do that. So I have a two gallon bucket here filled with water. Um, I am potting in sphagnum moss. This moss has been soaking for a little while. Um, when you're ready to pot, you're gonna take it, squeeze as much of that water out. I'm doing this one handed so it's not as easy. And then I put it in a little container to the side. Now, in this water, because I'm repotting, I really want to, and I know that and with most orchids, fall is not the time for repotting. However, with Sabrellias, um, <clears throat> they have a lot of root development right now. Um, in fact, if we take a look at this one, I mean, you can see how much it's already pushed itself up. I mean, look at the roots there. I don't want to cut those off, but I don't want them coming out the bottom. And if I let it go too much longer, um, it's not going to be a good thing. It's actually looks really wet because I did just water them today. So, like I said, I do have a pot of water here, or the bucket of water. Um, I've actually wet a, quite a bit of moss already. So some of the water is actually gone. In that water, <coughs> I do use the, the liquid rooting concentrate from Dip and Grow. Um, it's really good. I've been using it for quite a few years. We used it when I uh, ran the greenhouse at Gem Orchids and always had really good success with this. Um, I've had some really dead looking bare root plants. I've soaked in it uh, one cup per gallon and within a couple weeks I've got root growth. Now Sabrellias are a little sensitive to chemicals and these are seedlings so I'm, I used one cup or one cap, not one cup, one cap full per two gallons instead of one cap per gallon. So generally you want to have what you need. So like I said, you have your bucket of water. Um, there is some moss soaking in it right now. I also have the uh, moss that I have actually ringed out. And the first plant that I'm going to use is this plant right here. I have a bunch of other smaller plants here but they are also all popping out of their pots with the roots. So I'm gonna repot them. I also have my plastic pots that I'm gonna be potting into, and I use a little bit of time, uh, time release fertilizer. Um, this is a 18512 with miners. They actually like those minor elements in there. So looking at this first one that I'm actually going to repot, um, and the one that I'm going to use to show you guys, um, so I was looking at two different pots. This one is normally what you would do most orchids with. Um, if I do try to repot that, I'm not going to have enough room. I'm going to break roots. So I'm actually going to go with a little bit larger pot and just keep it drier until I see um, a lot of the uh, roots growing around the pot. So I'm just going to pull that out of the pot. Now luckily I had watered it and it was actually pushing itself out so much I was actually able to um, get it out very easily. Um, this is uh, Sabrea macrantha pepito crossed with Rosia jan. Um, I got this cross from uh, Bruce Rogers at one of the shows. So the first step I'm going to do is just put a little bit of moss into the bottom of the new pot. Just so that there's a little bit in there. The new plant I'm going to take and center. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of clean this off a little bit. And I'm not going to be able to clean this off with, while filming, so um, I am going to have to cut off. But there, you can see that there's a, a dead cane in here um, that I'm going to have to get rid of. I'm also going to get rid of some of these yellow leaves. 
Okay, so I did cut off the dead canes, cut off a couple of the dead leaves. I'm going to leave the sheaths uh, still on the plant, and then I'm going to go ahead and pot this up. So I'm going to place it right in the center of the pot, because as you can see, there are growths that are coming and starting on every side of this thing. So it's growing outward kind of in a ring. Just going to take a little bit, a little bit of time, and I'm just going to go in around the edges. I want to make sure that I'm not going to hurt or break any of those new growth tips. that forward and you see that there's still some on the side there and I can just press that in. Okay I'll come back and show you exactly what it looks like. Okay so I've lightly packed the sphagnum moss all the way around making sure that I didn't break off any root tips or a little bit more could go right in there. It's a little raised up a bit. Now some of you might say, oh my god, you didn't remove the original sphagnum moss. Well, the original sphagnum moss has only been there since the beginning of spring. Um, I removed these Sibrelia seedlings um, out of here at the beginning of the springtime. And they have been growing really fast. So um, the sphagnum moss, I use a very, very good quality sphagnum moss in mine. So therefore it's not going to degrade quickly. I can probably get about three years out of this. Um, the other good thing is Sibrelias um, are terrestrials, so if it's a little more compact and stuff like that in there, it's not really going to bother them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of that uh, time-release fertilizer, and I'm not going to use a lot. So that's about probably a half a teaspoon, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of that in. And kind of mix it in there. Sometimes what I'll even do is, before the top dressing of moss, or the, the top layer, the last one that I'm going to do is I'll put this time-release fertilizer in, and then I'll put a little bit more moss on top, which I can put a little bit more moss on here. Now, the moss is moist. I am not going to water this until it's almost, I'd say, a very dry, damp dry. Um, I'm going to go through, pot the rest of these up. Hope you enjoyed this little video. Um, like I said, this is uh, Sabrelia macrantha pepito crossed with Sabrelia rosea jan. And uh, I will try and find a photo of the uh, flowering plant and Posting. Okay, so just wanted to show you guys that this is my uh, Sabrea yaparensis in bloom. Looks a lot like Decora, except the flowers are a little bit larger. The canes are more erect. They don't tend to <clears throat> hang down or grow to the side like does. A lot of nice little hidden flowers in here. This plant is actually in a pot with potting soil. You can see it right there. It's actually growing more towards the light. Um, I just repotted this, I guess it was in the spring. It was breaking through the plastic pot that it was in. 
Normally I use sphagnum moss. This is the only one actually uh, growing the potting soil, but it seems to like it. Here is my uh, some Sobrius andrei. You can see the bud coming up on it right there. There's another cane right here that's Got another flower bud coming up in there, I can feel it. Okay, so uh, it started to rain uh, after I got them all potted up, so ended up coming inside to finish it up. Uh, thanks for watching this episode of Let's Talk Orchids. Uh, next week, uh, we will be going to the Delray Orchid Show to um, videotape live there. Uh, hopefully that's going to be a really good show. Uh, try, I'm going to try and talk to a few vendors. Um, if you want to, uh, look at for one of the links down below. Um, we have Let's Talk Orchids on Facebook now, so you can sign up for that. Um, you can also join the Dendrobium Species Group and the Sibrelias Group if you're interested in Sibrelias. <clears throat> uh, there's plenty of other uh, very interesting orchid groups out there. Be sure to uh, join whatever uh, orchid group you'd like. Also, if you would like to, um, you can sponsor the videos and um, you can click on that link down there below too. So have a good day and we will see you next week. Thanks.